afternoon. My name is Gerald Strammelvega and I'm working for the government of Lower Austria. Today I want to show you how we use Semantic Media Wiki in our IT department. Um, before I start, let's take a look on what I want to talk today. Uh, first, I want to give you a short overview about us, who we are and what we do. Then I want to show you two of our Semantic Media Wiki projects. Uh, the first one is about network documentation and the second one is about open government data. We will take a look behind the scenes and you will see how we use Semantic Media Wiki to publish our datasets. And at the end I want to show you some other smaller projects. Okay, let's start. Here are some facts about us. Uh, in our IT department we are 107 employees split up in four special groups like user support, administration, planning, development. And we have 212 locations uh, with IT equipment such as computers, switches, printers, telephones and so on. And our services and applications are running on almost 600 servers in two main data centers. So as you can see, we have a lot of devices to manage and support and in such a big environment, it's critical to have a, a good and up-to-date documentation. Uh, this leads us to our first uh, use case, uh, network documentation. Um, but before I show you the wiki, uh, I should give you some background information about the project to understand the design. <coughs> It all started about five years ago. At that time I was a system administrator and responsible for our network. In our IT department the preferred documentation system is Microsoft Office. I mean Office is great, it is quite simple and has many features, but uh, there are many disadvantages. Uh, we all know it's very static and uh, content can get easily out of date if you don't care about it. And if your documentation gets out of date, you do not really trust it. And if you do not trust your documentation, you do not use it. And so <clears throat> I was looking for a new way how we can keep our documentation up to date. And the idea was uh, keep all the good things and uh, find a tool which has the features we were missing. I mean, uh, five years ago I was absolutely a newbie to MediaWiki and Semantic uh, MediaWiki. Uh, but I had an idea that this may be the tool that I was looking for, because Semantic MediaWiki provides many features uh, a documentation system should have. With Semantic Queries you can make reports or reuse the content, you have a full text search and so on. But uh, there is still a, a general problem uh, left. But the question is, how can we keep our documentation up to date? And that's why I had to design a, a whole new system. <coughs> Here you can see our network infrastructure with switches, routers, firewalls, and so on. And we collect all the informi information that we need from these devices and store it in a, in a database like the firmware, the IP addresses, the uplinks, VLANs and so on. We do this with our uh, monitoring system, Nagios in our case. The benefit to do this with Nagios is that we can be sure that the, uh, that the information in the database is always up to date. Because if there is any problem with the collection process, we get the notification and can solve the issue. <laughs> <laughs> No problem. So on the one side we have our old data in the in this database from the running configuration. And on the other side we have our do uh, network documentation with Semantic Media Wiki. And we use Nagios to compare the documentation with the running configuration. And if there are any differences, we get the notification. Because of this process we can be sure that our documentation is always up to date. Okay, let's take a look on the wiki. This is the main page of our network documentation. It is a launcher for the most important sections 
of our documentation. But this page is only static and does not use uh, any semantic technologies. Here uh, we can see <coughs> an overview of uh, our locations in Lower Austria. It's an, uh, we use a semantic query uh, to list all our locations on this page because each uh, location is a page and so we can list them with semantic query in this overview. So if a new location is added or a location is removed, it will appear automatically on this page. Of course, we have also manuals in our documentation. This page you can see various categories of manuals. We also use semantic queries to list them on this page. This is our logbook. It's one of my favorite features because our before Semantic Media Wiki, no one cared about writing a, a log what happens all the day. But since the administrators can be sure that the documentation is always up to date, they started to write into a logbook. With Microsoft Office, this not has been done. You can also assign the log entry to a switch or to a location or a VLAN. As you can see, we use semantic forms uh, for the input of the, the data. This is an example of a switch and all the, da the data which is necessary for us. Uh, it is a good example to, the si to see the differences between the documentation and the configuration of the switch. On the left side we have all the information that a switch should have, the name, the IP address, the firmware and so on. And on the right side you can see a red entry at firmware. It indicates that uh, there are differences between the configuration of the switch and the documentation. And it's now that the job of the administrator to either change the documentation or uh, the running configuration of the switch. Each data on this page is also a semantic property, so we can use them later in reports or other semantic queries. There's also a tab for the logbook on its switch. Uh, if, ever, if anyone uh, assigns a log entry to the switch, it will appear on, on this page. It's also a semantic query. If a network administrator has to change the documentation of a switch, he can uh, use the edit form page. It's a user-friendly way to do this. We use semantic forms as often as we can. In most cases, no one has to write wiki code. Only in, in manuals, there is no other opportunity instead of, uh, of using wiki code. And this is one of those reports. Uh, it's a semantic query of o over all switches and the firmware. I mean, we use semantic technology as often as we can to write content only once and link or embed it in, in other pages. Because the idea is to change information only on a single point and all other pages are refreshed automatically. This helps us a lot to keep our documentation up to date. Okay, the second use case I want to show you is a tool for open government data. <coughs> Uh, two years ago, we launched a small project and started thinking about how we can publish some interesting data to the public. As a result of this project, we created a new section on our website and published over 40 data sets of various government data. On this page, you can see a data set about our playgrounds in Lower Austria. In the middle of the page, there is the metadata of this data set. This is actually an XML file, which is uh, transformed via style sheets and XML transformation to a static HTML website. Good. Um, let's take a look behind the scenes and sh uh, show you how this data set is created and what this all has to do with semantic media wiki. Uh, this is how it works. First of all, 
we decided that there has to be a person who is uh, responsible for open data, who has all the knowledge and uh, knows the processes. We call it the OGD administrator. Then we have many departments in our government uh, which hold all the information and the data. You can see them on the, on the left side. If they want to publish a, a new data set, they use a certain tool in which they can enter the metadata and upload the data. And the tool will, will make the rest. It exports the, the pages to an XML file and with XML transformation it is transformed to HTML. But uh, from the beginning of the project, um, it was well, the biggest challenge was um, how to get all the information from the departments and not the, the technical implementation. So we've been looking for a user-friendly tool in which the departments can easily publish the datasets. To find such a good tool, uh, we, we defined a workflow to figure out how a dataset should be published. And first of all, the tool should uh, be an information platform for all those who are interested in open data. It should provide information what is necessary to publish a data set. And if a department is interested in publishing a data set, he, uh, it has to request an account from the OGD administrator. And they said, okay, all of this can be done with MediaWiki, because MediaWiki is an information platform, and you can create the accounts and separate the, the readers from the editors. The second part of this workflow is a little bit trickier, because after logging into this tool, the user has to answer some questions, uh, upload the data, and enter some metadata. And at the end, the OGD administrator uh, has to publish the data set. I said, okay, most of this can be done with semantic media wiki, and the rest is done by JavaScript. Good. This is a screenshot uh, of our wiki, which our uh, departments are using to publish their datasets. On this page, you can see uh, all dataset, all new datasets, uh, they are waiting for publishing. It's a semantic query of the category new data set, I think. On this page, uh, you can see the data set uh, our play playgrounds in Lower Austria. And of the, on the top of the page, you can see the workflow that the user walked through. It is the same as when you buy a book on Amazon. You walk through certain steps, and at the end you have bought a book. In our case, the department has published the data set. Okay, next I've prepared a, a demonstration to show you the wiki, how it works. This is our wiki in action. Yeah. Uh, if a department wants to publish a data set, they have to request an account from the OGD administrator. Then they can log in and publish a data set in three simple steps. First of all, uh, they have to answer some questions about the data, about the, the privacy or in which format is the data, or the quality of the data. The user should ask himself the question, is my data ready for publishing? We use semantic forms in this case for the data review. After the, the department has finished with the data review, he gets feedback about uh, or is the, the data qualified for open data or not. And if everything meets the requirements, he can go to the next step and inform the OGD administrator that there is a new data set. The OGD administrator logs in and takes a look on, on the data review. And if everything is okay, he accepts it and passes it, passes it to the next step. After that, the department logs in and uh, has to upload uh, the data. This is done via a uh, web FTP application. 
after the user has uploaded the whole data, he can proceed with the next step, the input of the metadata. As you can see, we use semantic forms for the input cause with fields and checkboxes and drop-down lists. It's a user-friendly way to do this. On the right side, uh, we embedded the help section to support the user. If the help does ch uh, changes, uh, this page is also refreshed automatically. Okay, after the input of the metadata, the user gets a first preview of the data set. As it will look in the internet. And if everything is correct, you can release the data set for publishing. Then the OGD administrator gets an email and checks the data and the metadata and if everything is alright, uh, he publishes the, the data set uh, to the internet. Then a bot uh, exports the page into an XML file and copies to the web server. Now he publishes the data set. Okay, at the end I want to present you two smaller projects. We've also realized the batch job documentation. They're running a lot of batch jobs this whole day and <coughs> we export the job information from our job control uh, software to an XML file and with the external data extension uh, we import it in our wiki. Or another uh, project is our server documentation. For our test environment, we are currently developing a server documentation similar to the network documentation. In this case, we use all the external data extension to import uh, hardware information from the servers. And at the end, it should connect, be connected with the network documentation. So we've realized that with Semantic Media Week and all this, uh, those extensions, we have the power to uh, realize amazing things. It's really a great technology and I hope the people behind this project keep on developing useful, useful extensions. Thank you for your attention.